Letters from Felix, A Little Rabbit on a World Tour. Story by Annette Longin. Illustrations by Constanza Droop. Copyright 1994. At the end of vacation, something terrible happened. Suddenly, in the middle of the airport, Sophie's cuddly rabbit Felix disappeared. Don't worry, Sophie, Mom reassured her and put her arm around her. But Sophie felt a big lump in her throat. What if Felix is lost forever and ever, she thought. I'll find him, Dad promised, and started looking right away. We'll help too, her brother and sister added. But even though Lena, Nicholas, Julia, Sophia, and Dad ran all around looking and asking everyone they met, the little rabbit was nowhere to be found. This was very, very bad. Sophie and Felix had known each other forever, or at least since they had snuggled together in Sophie's crib. And even when Sophie grew bigger, Felix still got to sleep in the bed. The little cuddly rabbit and Sophie were inseparable. Only when she went to school did he have to wait for her at home. And every afternoon she would tell Felix exactly what had happened at school. They shared everything. Sophie was sure that Felix loved spaghetti more than anything, just as she did. Felix always understood Sophie, and Sophie knew what Felix wanted to say to her. When it was time for their plane to leave, there still wasn't the slightest trace of Felix, and so Sophie had to board the plane without her cuddly rabbit. She didn't want extra ice cream or the seat by the window. She just sat sadly. To cheer Sophie up, her little sister Lena drew a rabbit with crayons for her. He did look a little like her lost Felix. Sophie swallowed hard and swallowed again, and then a tear and more tears ran down her cheeks. Back home at bedtime, the bed seemed scary and empty without Felix, and so the summer vacation came to a sad end. School begins again today, but Sophie isn't even looking forward to seeing her friends and her favorite teacher. All she can think about is poor Felix. He's never traveled alone before. Isn't he awfully scared? When the first day of school is over at last, Sophie slowly makes her way home. She doesn't want to think about how there will be no more Felix waiting for her in her room. Her feet grow heavier and heavier, and it takes her a million minutes to reach the garden gate in front of her house. But why is Mom so excited? She's waving something in the air, and she calls, Sophie, look, there's some mail for you. Sure enough, there's her name on the envelope. Amazed, who could write in such a squiggly scrawl? Sophie turns the envelope over. News for Sophie, from Felix, presently at Sandwich Street 24, London, Great Britain. London, in August. Dear Sophie, unfortunately, I got lost in the airport, but please don't worry about me. I'm all right. I went aboard the wrong airplane. It did not fly home, but to London. Here, there's a square castle on a river, but the river is completely, absolutely filthy. There's also a big palace with lots of men in funny hats standing in front of it. You wouldn't wear a hat like that. This, even in winter. And one more funny thing. Everybody here talks differently. I'll write again soon. I miss you. Yours truly, Felix. Sophie can hardly believe it. A real letter from her Felix. Her heart leaps and she clutches the letter tightly. Then she hugs mom, takes a deep breath and shouts, Lena, Nicholas, Julie, Julius, come look. When dad comes home from work, he gets to read the letter too. Hmm, 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 he says, sounding surprised. So the traveler has landed in London. That's the capital of England. How many people live in the capital, Sophie asks. She wants to know all about where Felix is now. While dad, with dad, she looks in the encyclopedia under London. It says there, capital of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, lying on both sides of the, the Thames River, population almost 7 million, residents of the royal family, contains about 1,600 churches and chapels, as well as fortresses, including the Tower of London and the Houses of Parliament, one of the largest cities in Europe. Dad points to a picture and says that the English queen lives there in the palace. Later in bed, Sophie wonders whether Felix has seen the queen in the palace. Does she take her crown off at supper time? Thinking it over, Sophie falls happily asleep. A few days later, a letter arrives from Paris. Sophie sticks the envelope in her pants pocket, climbs up the old apple tree in the garden, and begins to read. In Paris, in September. Cher Sophie, that is French, and I love France. I now have a suitcase. It is très chic, as they say here. I'm seeing a bit more of the world. Paris is really not bad. I'm staying at the Hotel Ritz. It is very elegant. But somehow, it seems like the people in the hotel and on the street don't notice me at all. Funny, isn't it? It doesn't matter to me, though. The picture is of me at the Eiffel Tower. It is the highest tower that I have ever seen. Luckily, there is an elevator that goes to the top. The view is great. All the buildings look as small as matchboxes, only they have roofs and chimneys. Imagine this. The people carry their bread under their arms. 
and the bread is, is as long as a broomstick. Yesterday, I saw men playing boule in the park. Really big, Ben, like your dad. Can you believe that? A propos, how are things at home? Greetings and kisses from Felix. Hmm, Sophie wonders, how can everything be so different in Paris? Then she remembers that Grandma is coming to visit this afternoon. She will know all about it, for sure, since she has been to France many times. Ooh la la, the rabbit is in Paris, Grandma exclaims. Then she tells Sophie about the game Felix has described. It's called Boulet and is very popular in France. Sophie is interested to hear that Paris has a wonderful cathedral, wide shopping streets, beautiful gardens, and some very old churches. Then Grandma fishes out a travel guide. Sophie flips through it, and Grandma dreamily exclaims, Oh, they have, they have simply the most delicious food there. As proof, she serves a baguette, which is the bread Felix saw, cheese and French salad, and it tastes almost like a trip to France. Slowly it gets dark, and it's time to go to bed. Bonne nuit, Grandma whispers in French when she comes to say goodnight to the children. Do you know how much longer Felix's trip will take? Sophie asks. Now that is hard to say, Grandma answers. And thoughtfully she adds, Travelers always want to see just a little more. Sophie thinks this over. Does that mean that Felix will never come back? Suddenly, there's a big lump in her throat. Don't worry. Felix will be back home for Christmas. I'm absolutely certain. Grandma says quietly and gives Sophie a big goodnight kiss. Instead of counting sheep tonight, Sophie counts the days until Christmas. Just a few days later, Sophie receives another envelope with Felix's squiggly writing. From Felix, Bial de Lavaro, 53, Italy, Rome. Rome in hot September. Hi, Sophie. Let me tell you, it is pretty here in Rome. There's an ice cream man on every corner. You would definitely like that. In the middle of the day, it is so hot here that all the stores close and don't open again until afternoon. You can't imagine how many cats there are roaming around here, black and white, tiger-striped, and lots of other colors. Last night, one of these wild cat beasts was hunting me. Can you believe it? I don't look anything like a gray mouse, do I? Luckily, I got away, but it was close. Today I was watching a tour group. Did you know that the ancient Romans lived here? That's why the city is called Rome. Just imagine, 2,000 years ago they already had sports fields and swimming pools and temples for the gods. There are old buildings with columns and some marble slabs all over the place. There's something written on them in a secret code. When I'm back home, we can invent a, write, a secret writing too. What do you think? But first I'm going to travel some more. To Egypt. Ciao, Bella, as everyone here says. Yours truly, Felix. Sophie can stop worrying now. Grandma really was right. Felix writes that he will be coming home. As long as she knows he's coming, it doesn't matter when. But what's this secret code? Maybe Julius will know more about it, Sophie thinks. She finds her big brother bent over a book studying and tells him about the letter from Rome. I know that secret code, Julius groans. We had a vocabulary test on it this morning in school. He hands Sophie his Latin book. Most of the pages look very strange, but Sophie finds some pictures of the temples in Rome that she loves. In the morning, Sophie looks all the way up and down the street, but there is no sign of a little rabbit with a suitcase. Come home, Felix, she whispers, and hopes that her wish will come true soon. Slowly, the leaves on the trees turn color, and autumn comes. Sophie and her brothers and sister build four paper kites with Dad. On the weekend, they fly them in the big field. Sophie waits every day for the mailman. She has already given up all hope of news from Felix when the mailman finally hands her a colorful envelope. Immediately, Sophie knows that it can only be from Felix. Dear Sophie, here in Egypt, it is even hotter than in Rome. Yesterday, I rode on a camel. It wobbled like a ship. The camel goes down on its knees and lies almost flat so you can climb on. But most people don't come here because of the camels, but to see the pyramids. If you're wondering, there are triangles that are stuck in the desert. But get this, the kings of Egypt were buried inside them a long time ago with all of their jewels so that nobody could get to them. There are real small secret passages going all over inside the pyramids. I think it's real creepy. What if you couldn't find the exit anymore and there was nothing but these secret tunnels? Next to one of the pyramids, there's a gigantic cat, or a gigantic lion, I'm not sure exactly which, that lies there, sort of like a watchdog, but it has a woman's face. It's all so strange. Yours, Felix. P.S. I'm staying here a little longer, then I'll travel farther down the Nile. This letter Sophie reads twice. She just can't imagine the pyramids. How high are they, really? While she is wondering, Mom comes into the children's room. Well, since our Felix is in Egypt now, I have a surprise for you, she says. 
Mom won't tell Sophie anything more, and it's still a secret when they get into the car and drive away. When Mom finds a parking place, Sophie sees a big sign. It says, Egypt, an ancient kingdom. In the museum, Sophie is amazed. There's so many display cases, big pictures, and even an animated film. That afternoon, she finds out how the pyramids and the Sphinx were built. When Mom and Sophie get home late that afternoon, Julius calls out, Well, have you brought a mummy back with you? Right away, Lena wants to know what a mummy is. Nicholas wriggles his fingers and whispers darkly, That is an old and bomb pharaoh that wants to come and get you. Eee! Lena squeals. What nonsense, Sophie says. Don't believe a word he says. Pharaohs used to be kings in old Egypt. Exactly, said Julius. They've been dead now for at least 4,000 years. That sounds better to Lena. Feeling better, she helps Sophie build the biggest pyramid made of blocks that has ever been in the living room. Sophie runs home fast one particularly rainy November day. When she gets in, she can't take her new rubber boots off fast enough because there, there on the hallway table lies a crumpled envelope. Dear, dear Sophie, Sorry that I made you wait so long, but my trip from the Nile to the coast of Africa was very difficult. First, I traveled by train, and then in an ancient bus. The bus rattled as though it might collapse at any moment, but the long trip was worth it. Even in November, it is still sunny here, and there are endless stretches of beach and deep blue water. We could build the best sandcastles together here, but it's no fun for me all by myself. Do you know that I went on a real safari? I saw genuine elephants. Also, striped horses that are called zebras. Very far away, I spotted a lion. I was so glad that it didn't come any closer, because it looked just like that Roman cat beast. The monkeys are a lot more fun. You should see how they swing from tree to tree. I got dizzy just watching them. Stay on your guard, Sophie. Best wishes for you, from your Felix. Sophie looks up from the letter. Fat raindrops splash against the window. Everything outside looks so gray. She can hardly believe that the sun could be shining anywhere in the world. The next morning, it is still dark when Sophie takes the bus to the zoo with her whole class. Most of all, she wants to see the elephants. Everything there is very quiet. Only an old zookeeper is there. He tells her that every year there are fewer and fewer elephants in Africa. But why, Sophie asks. Isn't there enough room there? There's plenty of room, the zookeeper tells her sadly, but unfortunately, there are also too many people who ignore the hunting restrictions and only think about getting the valuable elephant tusks. Sophie is outraged and decides, when I am grown up, I am going to protect the elephants in Africa. That is her secret plan. She will tell it only to Felix when he is back home. In the evening, the wind howls around the house. Sophie snuggles up with Dad on the sofa. Where can Felix be now, she wonders. I hope he doesn't catch a cold. While she is thinking, Dad suddenly asks, What would you all say to baked apples? Who will help? Sophie stirs the vanilla sauce. Nicholas fills the hollowed apples with almonds. Lena nibbles here and there, sampling, she calls it. As the apples sizzle in the oven, Mom asks mysteriously, Can you guess who is coming to visit for Christmas? Tell us who, the children chorus. Mom stretches out the mystery, staring at them slyly, and at last tells them, Aunt Edda is coming. Sophie and her brothers and sisters are thrilled. Aunt Edda has been traveling all over the world. She tells exciting stories and is always full of new ideas. Suddenly, they smell something burning. Uh-oh, save the baked a- save the baked apples, Dad yells. But they get there too late. Don't be sad, Dad, Lena says. We still love you anyway. The day that Sophie and Mom bring the box of Christmas decorations out of the basement, a colorful airmail letter arrives for Sophie. Hey, Sophie, I've taken a plane to New York. I'm getting so good at not being seen that the people in the airport didn't notice me at all. This is an enormous city, I tell you. The buildings reach up high up into the sky, all the way into the clouds. That's why they're called skyscrapers. There's always something going on here. You can always hear police sirens or honking taxis. Everything here is very big. There's a huge park that is two and a half miles long. You can ride in a boat there and even ski in winter. An enormous statue of a lady standing in the harbor at the middle of the water. She wears a long dress and is holding a torch that is bigger than our house. Just imagine it. Today it snowed like crazy and Christmas decorations are hanging everywhere already. Do you know what? I miss you. I'm coming home on the next plane. I'm looking forward to seeing you a lot. Till soon, your Felix. Sophie's heart leaps with joy. Felix must be already on his way home. Then she rubs her forehead, thinking hard. She has heard of skyscrapers before, but was Felix exaggerating about the big lady in the harbor? It doesn't matter. When her dear cuddly rabbit comes back home, her room will look really great. Filled with excitement, Sophie cleans up and sticks the Christmas star decorations on the window. Then she hears hears mom calling. Children, come look. 
Whenever Mom says that, something special is happening. Sophie runs out to the hall, and there stands Aunt Etta with her arms wide open. They hug and hug and hug until at last Sophie lets Aunt Etta talk. On her trip, Aunt Etta had seen lots of things. She'd even been to New York. What do you know, Sophie thinks. And she asks her aunt about the big lady in New York. Oh, yes, says Aunt Etta. She has a real name. She's called the Statue of Liberty. Then things get really exciting because Aunt Etta opens her suitcase. She's brought little presents for everybody from her trip. Sophie actually receives a miniature Statue of Liberty. It is so small that Sophie can easily hide it in her fist. That night, Sophie and her brothers and sister are allowed to stay up later than usual. Together, they look at Aunt Etta's photographs. Then Aunt Etta sleeps in their room. When everybody wakes up the next morning, it has snowed a little. At last, it is time to start baking Christmas cookies. It is dark outside by the time the five big cookie tins are filled to the rim, and the whole house smells like cookies. Sophie knows Christmas is not far away now. Tonight, she can hardly fall asleep for excitement. The day after day passes without hearing or seeing anything of Felix. By Christmas Eve, Sophie is doubtful. Maybe Felix was kidnapped, or he's gotten sick along the way. Wherever can he be? Suddenly, there's a knock on the front door. Santa's coming, Nina whispers. Sophie, go look. Sophie's not afraid of Santa, who always looks an awful lot, lot like Dad. She opens the door, but there's no red hat to be seen. Sophie looks to the left and the right, and then to the doormat. She can't believe her eyes, because there, yes, truly, there stands Felix with a small suitcase. Felix, oh, Felix, she shouts again and again. Sophie hugs her cuddly rabbit, looks at him and hugs him again. Then she picks up his suitcase and sees it is covered with colorful travel stickers. Sophie shuts the door and whispers in his ear so that no one else can hear. So Felix the Globetrotter, now you must tell me exactly how you managed to travel around the world. His answer remains Sophie and Felix's secret. But if you want to know what Felix brought back from the world tour, just take a look in his suitcase.